This is the coolest vest ever. Oh yeah, it's tugged by the fucking time. It's everything. What else we got? We got well, three on the bottom. I see I have to do a lot of editing to get rid of these dull moments where we're waiting for things to happen. Are you going to glue it together? Well, I'm yeah, I guess you're, you know, you don't want to, I'm okay. you don't want to pop up or in the middle of it, thing. Eh? Sorry, York packaging. We did test temperature drop across this dryer and it was it was okay. Alright, we're good to go there. <laughs> yeah. As is no not as much copper. I put it right up against the container. I'm going as close as possible without trying yeah. to come in contact with them. Yeah. Down here anyway. You can gather it about to where the coils are joining. See what I'm talking about? Yeah. Water coming out of there. They turn it too far to go. Well, there we are. Cape Fear River, guys. Cape Fear Memorial Bridge. Very cool. What did you do? Did you drop something? A tubing cutter. <laughs> A tubing cutter? Ah, mother ocean. Jump in and get it, T-Bear. <laughs> no, the pressure's still dropping. Not as low as it was the other day, but I feel like if it ran long enough, it would be. Tracking through there. Yeah, just a square rough open. What's that? Yeah. That's all they got. Well they have this that here, but it's kinda of pulling from underneath there anyway, going around the corner. But basically. Well, it's even smaller. 40, well, yeah, I guess. 46 by 5. 46 by 5, and then you count this side as this one, because it's only pulling from this side that are here. So, what by 5 would that be? You say that's 28 by 5. 28 by 5, and that's kind of being generous, probably. Yeah. 
He's measuring, he's trying to see how much CF, uh, CFM he's actually, we're actually getting through here. Pressure's still dropping. It's higher than the other day, but then it's hotter than the other day, too. But we're going to see what we're dealing with right now. It averages the whole sum of it, right there. Thirteen hundred and forty-five feet per minute. CFM. Say really? so thirteen forty-five. Remember that part. Yeah, it's not going to be anywhere near what we had underneath there. Even though it's the same. Uh, there's less resistance. This Shouldn't be much coming through right there. Two hundred sixty-seven CFM. That means we're getting roughly just over half what is required. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's see. We're getting over just over half. We're getting two sixty-seven through sixteen between sixteen and seventeen hundred. We need three thousand. That's a little bit off. Well, that definitely explains the issue. Uh, I mean, now it would have been nice to compare before the the, the coil and that. Supply air is so cold because of the. Uh, the airspeed across the coil. We have 1600 CFM across the coil. That requires 3000 CFM nominal. And we have a temperature that's plummeting because coil temperature is plummeting. Okay, this call involved a 7.5 ton carrier air handler and a 7.5 ton York condenser. And the issue was, the first issue was the first company came out and added refrigerant because they said it was low in refrigerant. Okay, obviously that didn't work. The unit was still having the same issue even though they added refrigerant. Same company came out again, put it on a TXV. Obviously that didn't work because it wasn't a TXV. And by that time they charged the customer thousands of dollars and hadn't fixed anything that wasn't that was actually broken. The air handler requires a certain amount of air across the coil to operate correctly. Uh, seven tons is nominal. 3,000 CFM of air, and this unit was getting around 1,600, 1,500, 1,600 CFM. Now that's not going to cut it. That's like your two-ton unit at home getting 400 CFM. So it's just not enough air to keep the coil at the right temperature. You look at the temperature of the coil, it plummets where it should have been 35 degrees maybe in that area, 30 to 35 degrees on that coil. At the temperature inside, it was 15 degrees. Just a complete imbalance of airflow to the tonnage required. Most likely the boat is requiring five tons of air conditioning, but sort of overkill because they're only getting probably three to five tons of air conditioning anyway. So it's just a bad install in a place where you can't fix it because of the surroundings. So we tried to make it the best. We cleaned the coil to free up air. We opened up the access door and left it off to get any air around the unit possible. But it just comes down to the fact that we can only do so much with what we have. And hopefully that will keep the unit from cycling off on low pressure. And uh, that's about all we can do. But the cool part is we got to work on a tugboat. And that is awesome.